Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how you can do this. So what you just saw is a build that, uh, credit to Shane, by the way, my friend Shane showed me this. This is a build for Hunter that will pretty much get your super in 20 seconds or less or more, depending on the amount of ads that you're dealing with. So it's great for ad clear, uh, it's great for getting your super quickly, and it might be a good build that you want to use in the day one raid race. So without further ado, I'll show you what you need. As for the subclass, we're running Threadrunner, of course. As for the dodge, we're using Marksman's dodge. This has a lower cooldown than Gambler's dodge. And of course, this reloads your weapon, which is fantastic. Strafe jump, you can use strafe, triple, any of these, personal preference. We're using Threaded Spike, of course. And then one of the key elements to this build is the grapple. We're going to need the grapple in order to get the super energy. As for aspects, there's only two at the moment. We've got Widow Silk and Ensnarling Slam. Then for fragments, we're running a threat of generation. Dealing damage generates grenade energy. This is going to help us top up our grapple ability when it's just a little bit under the usable mark. Threat of binding. Super final blows emit a super burst from the target. This is quite simply for the resilience boost, but it is also utilized in PvE as well. Makes your super a little bit better than it would be standard. Threat of warding. Picking up an orb grants woven mail. Now this one is important as well. Woven mail gives you a 35% damage bonus. Obviously, it's minus 10 resilience, so you are going to need to spec into resilience a little bit more. But if you pair with this a 100 resilience build, you get 65% damage resistance. That's 30% from 100 resil, 35% from woven mail. And as for the last fragment, a thread of ascent. Activating your grenade ability reloads your equipped weapon, grants bonus airborne effectiveness and handling for a short duration. Now, the bonus AE, we don't need. Bonus handling, yes, that allows us to swap our weapons. Of course, activating our grenade ability is going to reload our equipped weapon, which is again good for DPS. And this also gives us a mobility stat. Now, the real key to this build are the mods that you run on your armor. So, as for weapons, whatever your personal preference is, I would ideally run a strand weapon or your kinetic, purely because in some activities, and depending on if you want to tinker with this build a little bit, strand siphon is a mod that you could use with this build simply for the orb gen because orbs are or orbs of power orbs of light whatever they're referred to now they play a massive role in this build so for me i'm using the synchronic roulette now let's move on to the armor mods as for the helmet we're running two ashes to ashes mod ashes to assets i always get that wrong gain bonus super energy on grenade kills now it's a little bit misleading with the grapple because even though the grapple is a grenade and you don't really do damage or kill enemies with it we don't really know where we stand, but I believe this does work. I'm taking Shane's word for it. So, and I believe that synergizes with hands-on gain bonus super energy on melee kills. So we're going to grapple onto our target. We're going to finish them off with the melee. Obviously, the more adds you kill with the melee at the end of your grapple, the more orbs you're going to gen. And when you pick up those orbs, that is going to replenish your grenade. We'll get to that in a moment. As for the gauntlets, we're running firepower. Your grenade final blows create orbs of power. Heavy-handed, your powered melee final blows create orbs of power. So both of these are going to gen orbs of power. I think the way it works is heavy-handed, which we're looking at right now, gens us one orb from the powered melee final blow. And then firepower generates a second orb on a grenade final blow. So that melee you do after you grapple, I believe is counted as a grenade kill and a melee kill. I've been testing this out a little bit. And when I melee a group of adds, the minimum amount of orbs that I gen is two. So I'm fairly confident that both of these work. And then grenade kickstart. When your grenade energy is fully expended, you gain grenade energy. Additionally, your armor charge is consumed and you gain additional grenade energy for each stack. As for the chest piece, we're running double charge up mods. Increases the maximum number of stacks of armor charge you can carry by one. So the more stacks we have, the better, because that synergizes with our grenade kickstart. As for the boots, we are running Star Eater Scales. I would highly recommend this for PvE. If you don't know what Star Eater Scales are, I've recently just gotten them myself. This is my 
day two, day three of messing around with these. You gain additional super energy from orbs of power you pick up. While your super energy is full, picking up an orb of power overcharges your super, causing you to gain a burst of healing when cast and a bonus to your super damage. At maximum overcharge, which is times four, you also gain an overshield. So we're already with this build picking up the orbs, so you might as well take advantage of Feast of Light, especially with this super on Hunter. I don't know if it's bugged or not, but it deals an absolute boatload of damage, and with Star Raiders on top, it does even more. As for the mods, stacks and stacks, picking up an orb of power grants you one additional stack of armor charge. This is going to keep our armor charges as high as possible. And then we're running two innovation mods. Reduces grenade cooldown each time you pick up an orb of power. And then for the class item, I'm running one bomber mod. Reduce grenade cooldown when using your class ability. I'm using healthy finisher just in case. We do have a lot of stacks to deal with with how many orbs we're genning. You never know, you might be 1 HP in a endgame PvE activity using this build. And this saves your life. And then in the last slot, font of restoration. You gain a bonus to recovery while you have an, any armor charge. Your armor charge now decays over time. Now, as for the mods here on the class item, I, I would probably say it's preference. It depends on the activity you're running. I mean, you could use time dilation to keep your armor charges up because font of restoration isn't that important, especially with woven mail. And as for healthy finisher, you could run, what is it? Proximity ward. You gain a powerful overshield while performing your finisher. Have a mess around with it. See what you think. But that is the build that I was using. And of course, my stat distribution is 505, 555. If you can, try go for a high mobility, high resilience, high resilience, high discipline build, something around that mark. I don't have good Hunter armor, if I'm honest with you. I need to farm some high stat gear. But I had a ton of fun using this. Hunter is definitely my most favorite strand character with this expansion. And of course, we've changed up the drip a bit to... Uh, look a little bit more strand like if anybody's curious there's the transmog now what i was saying earlier about the siphon mod if you really wanted to and i have tried this it isn't really that noticeable in fact it's not noticeable at all if you remove one of these but if you swap out ashes to assets for let's say a harmonic siphon or if you're not on strand actually no you'd want to be on strand never mind if you swap this out for a harmonic siphon mod uh, basically rapid strand weapon final blow scripts orbs of power and like i said this entire build revolves around picking up those orbs of power so give it a go with harmonic siphon uh, this can sometimes save you especially if you mess up your ability combos and you're left with no abilities you can just go on a bit of a spree with your strand smg sidearm quicksilver storm whatever and rapidly gen some orbs get all your abilities back and then go from there but i hope you found this video helpful let me know if you tested this build out for yourself and if there is anything you would change please do consider dropping a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribing to the channel I'll catch you guys in the next one.